How's it going, everyone? And welcome back to Rangers Rundown. The Rangers put together their third shutout in a row last night against the Winnipeg Jets, a game that I was at, so apologies for the delay on this video. I didn't get home until about 1.30 in the morning, and it's not exactly the best time to do a video, so here we go. Kreider, Zibanejad, Vetrano, still that first line. Panarin, Strom, Kopp, Lafreniere, Hedl, Goudreau, Hunt, Rooney, Reeves, Lingren, Fox, Miller, Trubin, Nemeth, Schneider, and Shesterkin was in net. Rangers controlling the puck early, but very few chances uh, for the teams for about the first five minutes. Uh, Rangers definitely possessing the puck more, getting into the offensive zone more than Winnipeg, but not being able to generate too much offense. And we're used to the Rangers having slow starts, so there's nothing new there. Six minutes in, the fourth line does have some pressure. Regardless of who's on the fourth line for the Rangers, they do end up generating a little bit of offense, which is really important in the playoffs. So I'm glad to see that they're still generating, regardless of who's there. Seven and a half minutes in, Panarin has a chance uh, at the side of the net off of a broken play. Then shortly after, the second line has a couple of chances. Rangers, they have the puck more, but they're sloppy with it. Um, and especially in that second period, uh, just passes not great. Um, not winning too, too many board battles, not being able to clear the puck out of their zone, just very sloppy with the puck. Uh, six and a half minutes left, Panarin is by himself at the bottom of the circle for a chance. Just over five minutes left, Shesterkin gets a piece of a shot, but it ends up trickling through, uh, but the Rangers able to keep it out of their net. Lafreniere has a chance two on two with about three minutes left. He had a couple of good chances last night. First line with a couple of chances late in the period, but we end the period scoreless with the shots 9-6 to six in favor of the Rangers. Obviously a very exciting first period. Igor has a huge save about 15 seconds into the second. And this is where Winnipeg comes out and just completely flips the script. Rangers controlling the puck a lot more in the first period. Early in the second, it was all Winnipeg controlling play in the early stages. Shesterkin has a long outlet pass to Lafreniere at the offensive blue line. He gets another chance. And then Igor makes a great save on Kyle Connor, who is one of the more dangerous goal scorers in the league this year. Kreider and Vetrano have a two-on-one about six minutes in. But the Rangers really struggling to clear the zone. Like I said, it was very frustrating watching live just Winnipeg able to keep cycling the puck and keep their offensive hopes alive and the Rangers just unable to get the puck out of their own zone. Halfway through, the sh uh, a shot drops in the crease, but it is cleared out. And then at 14-19, I finally have something to write on the board. Morgan Barron, remember him? He got traded to Winnipeg in case some of you weren't aware of that. Barron takes a high sticking penalty. And during that power play, Strom would score the first goal of the game, a power play goal at 15-57. Very nice deflection up top. Third line has some pressure right after that. And then Shesterkin makes three great saves in a short amount of time. Not right in a row, but within two shifts, he makes three great saves. Panarin has a takeaway that leads to a chance for Cop down low. There's a scramble in the final minute, just a flurry of shot attempts from the Rangers trying to get it to nothing. Shots 14 to 12 in favor of the Rangers after that second period. We get into the third, another early save by Shesterkin. And then at 121, Miller takes a high sticking penalty. And during that penalty kill, Kreider and Zibanejad have a shorthanded two on one. 341, Ehlers takes a tripping penalty and the power play was fine. It didn't really generate too, too much on that. Truba has a chance after a nice move gets him into the slot all alone. Kreider and Zibanejad have another two-on-one, but Kreider's stick breaks uh, during his shot. Nine minutes left in the game. Panarin has another great chance. He had a couple of those. And then at 11.41, Fox with a beautiful floater right from the top of the zone. His seeing eye shot hit the back of the net, putting the Rangers up two to nothing. And... I won't say icing this game, but pretty much icing this game. When the goal was scored, there was over eight minutes left to play. Plenty of time for a good hockey team to score two goals, unless you're playing against Shesterkin. So that kind of sealed the deal. Five and a half minutes left. Shesterkin makes a save on an Ehlers breakaway, which would have given the Winnipeg Jets life, but Shesterkin said no. Three minutes left, the Winnipeg pulls the goalie, and then they take a timeout with two minutes left. But at 19.26, Strom would score his second goal of the game, an empty netter to completely ice the game, 3-0. And the Rangers come out with their third shutout in a row. 
the first time the Rangers have done that since 1973. So it's been a hot minute since that has happened. This is also their 50th win of the season. So the Rangers sit on 106 points, tied with the Carolina Hurricanes for first place. The only reason the Rangers are not in first place is because the Carolina Hurricanes have one more regulation or overtime win uh, over the Rangers. So they are tied in points, but Carolina gets the tiebreaker. Five games left in the season. Will the Rangers push for first place? I'm starting to feel more comfortable that it would be fine if they did. If the Rangers stay in second place, they're playing either the Penguins or the Capitals. If the Rangers push into first place, they're either playing, I believe it's Boston or um, Washington or Pittsburgh. So if they stay in second, they're playing one of these two teams. If they push to first, they're playing one of these two teams or Boston, whichever one ends up in that first wild card spot. The Capitals are only one point behind Pittsburgh. At this point, I mean, we've been extremely confident that the Rangers were going to play Pittsburgh in the first round. But now, with five games left, you can overcome a one-point deficit. The Caps can move into that third-place spot, and the Rangers can end up playing them two and three. Or Caps can overtake Boston, and Rangers can get in the first and end up playing Washington that way. Or Rangers can get in the first and end up playing Boston at I don't mind any of those three matchups. I guess the one I would be most afraid of is Boston. But again, like, are we afraid of Boston? Like, not really. Are we afraid of Washington? No. Are we afraid of Pittsburgh? No. Like, it, I think any first round matchup for the Rangers is going to be fine. It's going to be winnable. Um, it's the second round that's probably not so much uh, winnable unless uh, somebody ends up ousting one of the first place teams. But I think a first round win for the Rangers is well within their skill set. And I think as fans, we're very much looking forward to the Rangers getting to that second round this year. It'll feel a little disappointing if they don't. Stats at the end of the game, shots 34 to 31 in favor of the Rangers. Faceoffs 55.6%. Power play went one for two, hits 20 to 16 in favor of the Rangers, blocks 14 to 15 in favor of the Winnipeg Jets. I'm sure there was a trivia question last night, but I was live at the game and they don't show it live at the game. So I have no idea what it was. Hopefully you got it right though. And that's it. Rangers are back in action tomorrow night at the Islanders, I believe. They're away at the Islanders, 7.30 start time for that game. We'll see if the Rangers can have a little redemption against an Islanders team that's had their number pretty much all season. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more videos like it, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next rundown.